Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com and today we are in the 44 square foot dream shop. So this is my home laboratory. The laboratory you guys normally see is my current facility where I work and I do lots of stuff there and all my things are there. But this is my current facility for doing this particular project. And what is that project? Okay. That project is based on something that I've been researching for a very, very, very long time. And that is rodent coils and rodent math and vortex-based mathematics. Um, so I'm going to go through a short story and I'm going to tell you why I have this in my hand and how it got here. Um, I made it. That's how it got here. But anyway, so here we go. First of all, this is the laboratory section. This is the machine shop section. There's a mini lathe here. And there's another lathe in here. If you can find it, let me know. Those of you who know where it is. Okay. So. About five, six years ago, I uh, did a lot of research on vortex-based mathematics and rodent coils and uh, abha coils and all sorts of stuff. This is this is considered more of an abha torus. Um, it's based on the exact same math, same geometry. It's just that this is a crotch ha cross hatched pattern where this is a single direction coil. Um, so why do I have these? Well, first off, I went to a conference uh, recently about two weeks two not even a week and a half ago. Uh, a week and a half ago, we'll say a week and a half ago. Uh, almost two weeks ago. It is, by the way, June 9th at 11, 11 p.m. So I basically started working on these coils and I talked to Marco Rodin, which is the guy who uh, originated the math, the vortex-based mathematics. And uh, that was, you know, years and years ago. So I recently went to this conference and uh, it was Global BEM. A gentleman got me there and it was amazing. I actually spoke at the conference and then now I, uh, I got to meet Marco Rodin. And why I was there, that was the first time I ever got to meet him. While I was there, he asked me to do something very interesting. Uh, he wanted me to come on stage and he wanted me to, to present something with a gentleman on Skype that we are calling 007. So if you see that anywhere, that's who we're talking about. That's what Marco decided to call him. So 007 showed us something very interesting, um, which was based upon the this coil here, this particular style of coil. And it was showing phenomenons uh, that were basically... Um, an, an, inter, an energy amplifier and for those of you who are new to my YouTube channel and don't understand what I'm talking about I like to do alternative energy research um, some of you who find me through 3D printing you don't understand that's my sort of forte that's what I you know, built this channel upon and then 3D printing was just half of it or so so I haven't done anything with these coils in a long time Marco asked me to present with him and we did that now I gotta give Daniel Nunez uh, and his wife, Erica, the, uh, me and Daniel actually worked together like seven or eight years ago when we originally started working on this math and understanding how to build these coils. And he came up with a really ingenious flat coil design. And then after a long time of thinking, he came up with this design of using these plexiglass, in this case, forms and a center form here. And basically, um, you just make up the form and wrap the wire. It's it's really simple. So, where is it? This is the this is the center piece of the 3D printed part, um, and then you put the forms on here and wrap the wire on there. So, Eric and Daniel created these coils. These are actually coils wound by them. They have always shown some interesting phenomenons with these ionization and high voltage and some really interesting power. Uh, type amplification stuff and the meters are always showing more power out than in it's like really weird um, so Marco presented with the gentleman like I said and me presented this basic coil and his understanding and what he did and um, he basically Marco basically wanted me to reproduce this in the States um, the other gentleman is in another country and so I'm like, all right, now, um, as of this very moment, um, 007 is doing something different, and I don't know what's going to happen with him past this as far as communication links and stuff like that. But basically, 
we got enough information to get ourselves started and that's that's where we're going from now um, so in the presentation all right we used this particular 007 uses this particular amplifier it's a b200h acoustic it's a bass amplifier um, it's because of how it's driven and how it works it's a good amplifier for this application I've got here a Textronics, a Tektronics TPS 2024B. Uh, the oscilloscope is actually works. I am borrowing it. And I also have current probes of the exact identical current probes that he was using. Uh, this is LS261. These are ACDC current probes, 0 to 100 kilohertz, uh, 0 to 70 amps RMS. 100 amps peak to peak so I've got the oscilloscope set up I've got the power measurements on this oscilloscope I've got the signal generator here so I've, I've got the basic exact setup as he does I also have capacitors over here that I'm going to be using for uh, tuning this 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 coil and understanding it so oh and I also have uh, I also have these light bulbs which are the same ones that he was using or roughly the same ones that he were using I think his were seven watts. These are like 6.5, close enough. Um, these also might be a different voltage, but um, anyway, I'm not gonna be able to get those back in there. So I basically, in a week and a half-ish, through an amazing community at open-source-energy.org, there are people over there, uh, like the mat, you know, the mat, uh, the floor mat, you know, where uh, the one dog sits. Anyway, so, inside joke. Anyway, um, we have worked really hard to get this far. One dog, Matt, actually is the one who drew this up for me. And I have been displaced from my home with that fire that was nearby. And still managed to get this stuff accomplished and actually build and construct this coil. Okay, so I am literally sitting here making this video before I ever start, giving you guys the story and understanding of what's going on here. So you're gonna see a series of videos coming up. Now, what is my goal, okay? Um, Daniel and Eric have been showing some interesting phenomenon for years, years of this device. Now, in case you're curious, vortex-based mathematics, this geometry of this coil is based on the math. However, there are 12 um, points in each one of these forms here, okay? And there are actually 11 uh, individual forms, okay? So we're calling these the formers and the inside piece is the ring. Now, if you do it by the math, it's actually 12-12, 12, 12, 12 both ways, uh, according to this exact style. It's actually 36 by 36, but we won't get into that. Um, like I said, I spent two years studying the math, so I understand it. So I, I understand why these look like and what they, the function of the math do. And actually, if you want to go perfect math, this is all wrong. That's what I'm explaining now. This is actually 11 by 12. What The reason that we do that is because the wire needs to go out and go around, 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 and come back to the point. So if you look here, there's only, there's only an entrance and an exit. Okay? One wire each. Now, on this coil, there's two. There's an L1 and L2. On this coil, there's actually only one coil. It's just you cross-hatch pattern it, and it comes out as one single coil here. Um, and then there's two conductors on the end here. So basically, what is my goal? All right, I've seen the phenomenon by many people, and then this 007 gentleman shows it, and I'm like, all right, now it's really interesting. And then Marco walks up to me and asks me to you know, replicate this thing and, and see what's going on. And I'm excited to do that. Now, what I expect to do is actually show and demonstrate the phenomenon. I'm calling it a phenomenon because I absolutely do think that there is a power factor that is going on here that is tricking the analog meters and the digital meters. Now, with the oscilloscope, we're going to be able to measure that exact information. Okay, we're going to be able to measure the power factor, the phase angles, the wattage in, wattage out. We've got two current probes. We've got two regular probes. I've got two high voltage probes. They're all isolated channels. Nothing's connected together. We should have really good measurements. And that oscilloscope is actually battery powered. So my goal is to use the oscilloscope to understand why the meters are reading what they're reading. Now, you know, reactive power and true power and the power factor, all of these things that rely on the understanding of how this stuff works is very important. And most people don't have the knowledge to do this. 
I'll be honest with you and tell you I'm on a learning curve myself, but I have friends and fellows that can help me out, okay, and actually make me understand some of the things I may not understand. I don't understand everything, but that's the whole reason I work in open source, okay? So, what, do, what else do I have around here? I have, you guys don't know this, but I did a lot of work with the Zhijin, but at that time I didn't have the right, the right stuff, and uh, now I have the right oscilloscope, and I created a bunch of these Tesla pancake coils, and if you don't know what the Zhijin is, it's something JL Nodden created, and it's interesting, but I couldn't see anything worth publishing, and I'm not done with the tests, so that's a whole nother subject, but I, I did do that, which you guys don't know that. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. So my goal is to just see the phenomenon, understand the phenomenon, and then show you guys what it is. Okay. Now, if you want to follow along and you want to build the coils and there's already four or five, six people building the coils, I made it to the end of the race, uh, before everyone, but everyone's probably going to pass me up and we're all going to learn together. And not everybody has such a nice oscilloscope with the proper measurement. And so the whole idea here is to share, to publish, and to inform. All right. If there's an error here, we're going to see it. If there's something very interesting, we're going to see it. I actually believe there's something interesting here worth pursuing, but there are also phenomenons that are false readings. That's my personal viewpoint as it stands right now. Okay. And again, today is June 9th at 1121 now p.m. So this video is already 13 minutes long almost, so I'm going to let it go. Uh, if you want to help, okay, I actually spent a lot of money on this, and there's a few people donating some money. I would appreciate the donation, but I'm not asking for donations. I'm just saying it's always there on my website, rwgresearch.com. It goes straight to this stuff. Totally just an open thing. I'm not asking for money. I'm just saying if you're wanting to, you can do that. Um, so basically, open-source-energy.org, you will find all the information about these coils. You will find the 3D printable forms. You will find a CNC version that Matt has created. Um, you will, not yet, but as of today, I don't have the schematic drawn, but you will understand the schematic. You will understand how to connect it. You will eventually understand how to tune it, and hopefully you'll eventually understand what we're measuring and why and how. Now. I'm excited about this project. I have had many, many sleepless nights over the last week and a half to get the actual base amp here, the oscilloscope, the probes, the coil built, the form, uh, the, the 3D printing took about two days. I printed it slow enough to make it nice. I'm printing more of these. The wire, I have 32 AWG and I have uh, 22 AWG, which is what this coil is but I need to reconfigure this coil according to ohms per the amp and just all sorts of details I don't need to talk about right now. I will give you a clue. This coil has shorted internal copper core pieces. That's a key to this particular style of configuration. Now Daniel doesn't do that on his, as far as I understand. I've never seen him mention that. 007 did do that and there's some special functions for that there are people out there such as Paul Babcock and, and Jim Murray who have demonstrated very similar principles with changing power factor and getting the thing to function very interestingly and that's what the goal is here it's all about converting the power now and I'll leave it at that because I need to do my own homework and research but from what I'm gathering those are my notes okay and that's it. I'm going to let you guys go with that. Please come check out the forums, dig in, have some fun. I am exhausted. I've been staying up too late doing this, but this is a beautiful thing. This is a beautiful thing. It's just so cool. It's so nice. It feels good in my hands. This, this is a really nice coil, but something about the same direction windings really makes me feel happy. Now, I will tell you that I technically wound this coil wrong it's actually spinning the wrong direction you need it you, you, you want it to go clockwise that's just because that's the way things work but I wear I wrap this on accident counterclockwise and I'm gonna test it I have a feeling it's gonna work either way but it very well may vary depending on which hemisphere you're in and all sorts of weird things that I'm not gonna talk about right now peace and love God bless have a good day
I would appreciate any support you're willing to give, especially community support on the forums. Thanks, Marco. It was awesome to meet you. Randy, it was unfortunate you didn't make it. Jason Verbilly didn't make it. These are all conference things I'm talking about. Uh, lots of weird things, unfortunate situations, and uh, the flood that happened 17 inches the night before the conference. It was crazy. Okay, see ya. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me give you a quick tour of what's in this shop. So, I'm filming here. Um, I've got a, a mini mill, a mini lathe. I've got tools, glue. There's a computer over here that's not connected at the exact moment. Actually, it is, but it's not on. Pipe fittings, tools, stuff, things. More stuff and things, more stuff and things. All my, some other tools and things and stuff. And then here's my new, newly found electronics bench. And I actually prefer it to, I prefer it to look about like this. It's pretty. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. If you want to know, this is a Regal DG1022. This is my instrument. I bought a long time ago. Um, again, the oscilloscope here. And I've got my probes and stuff here. This is the bass amp output. Um, and I got stuff stacked everywhere. You just have to find it. Okay, peace and love. Bye.